Welcome to the first edition of the weekly polling update where we discuss the most important polls of the last seven days. And we're going to start with a poll from Emerson which surveyed voters from Michigan for both party primaries, general election matchups between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, and the Michigan Senate race. The GOP primary results aren't particularly shocking, but it's a good indicator of how non-competitive the primary currently is. Trump leads Ron DeSantis by 48%, and if this is the result on election night, Trump would win the vast majority of Michigan's 55 delegates. Keep in mind that the Michigan primary has also been moved up in 2024, voting fifth after Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada. Possibly of note here is that Mike Pence is third in this poll, a decent result for him. If Trump goes down following his latest indictment, maybe Pence could emerge as a serious contender, maybe not. The general election matchup between Donald Trump and Joe Biden is particularly interesting. The poll found them tied at 44%, with 8 saying they'd vote for somebody else and 5% still undecided. But what's even more interesting to me is that when Cornell West is added to the ballot, he's running as the Green Party candidate, Trump receives 43% of the vote to Biden's 41%. Michigan is obviously one of the most important states in 2024, and this is a very encouraging early sign for Trump supporters. In the Senate race, Alyssa Slotkin has emerged as the clear frontrunner to replace incumbent Democrat Debbie Stabenow, who won't be seeking re-election. It's really not that close, and it's not going to be close. Alyssa Slotkin will be the Democratic nominee in this race. The GOP side is a bit murkier, with Mike Rogers and Peter Miger leading the way. Neither of these candidates have even declared that they want to run for Senate. They might not even run. Snyder and Hoover are both running, but it doesn't look good for either of them right now. We also have some head-to-head -head polling between Alyssa Slotkin and the GOP candidates. I wish there was a chart for this, but there's not. Slotkin leads Miger 42-36, to leads Snyder 44-36, to leads Tuttle 45-35, to and leads James Craig, who also hasn't announced a run yet, 45-38. to I rated this race as lean Democrat in my Senate prediction video, and I still feel pretty good about that. Shifting gears a little bit, we have a new poll from Ipsos on Donald Trump's favorability, and it is not good. They surveyed more than a thousand adults, so not just likely or registered voters, and found that Trump is viewed favorably by just 30% of adults, he's viewed unfavorably by 59% of adults. Now on top of that being just an abysmal favorability, I think the difference in surveys between adults and likely or registered voters is staggering. Trump is hovering around 40% when likely and registered voters are surveyed, so maybe this one result is just an outlier, or maybe it's an indicator that more people who aren't voters view Trump unfavorably rather than favorably. And 40% is right around where Joe Biden's approval rating is. We get approval rating polls all the time. As you can see, we've had several over the past week. And in recent polls, Biden's approval has been pretty consistent whether adults, likely voters, or registered voters are surveyed. The other main candidate running in 2024, Ron DeSantis, his approvals have sort of stabilized around 35%. I mean, just look at this trend over the past six months. Back in February, DeSantis actually had a positive favorability rating. Now it is just so negative, minus 11 the more people see Ron DeSantis, the less they like him. It's not what you want when you're running for president. The most recent poll of Ron DeSantis' favorability surveyed both registered voters and adults, and just like Trump, he does better with registered voters. Next, let's take a look at the latest poll out of Iowa. Iowa is the first primary contest in 2024, and unsurprisingly, Donald Trump holds another commanding lead. One of my biggest takeaways here is that Tim Scott is currently in third place. He looks like a pretty good candidate on paper, but that doesn't always translate to success. Another good sign for Scott here is his 70% favorability rating compared to 72% for Trump and 77% for Ron DeSantis. Trump did slightly underperform his polling average in Iowa in 2016, and caucuses are notoriously difficult to poll, so keep an eye out for Tim Scott and don't be surprised if he continues to climb. That being said, Tim Scott is a pretty distant third at this point. Vivek Ramaswamy, who has climbed a third in some polls, is currently polling fifth in Iowa. Nikki Haley continues to be a non-factor, and Mike Pence, though he had a good result in Michigan, does not look so strong in Iowa, and if he doesn't do well in Iowa, he's not going to make it to Michigan. And keep in mind that a crowded field will absolutely help Trump in the primary. He'll maintain his plurality while the non-Trump vote gets split several different ways. But ultimately, the GOP primary is looking pretty non-competitive at the moment, so check out my next video to see just how quickly Donald Trump would wrap up the nomination based on current polls.